This game takes place in South Louisiana. You're getting a glimpse of a state of decay and kind of having been left behind. A whole community wherein the country that they're a part of has flourished without them and has in fact flourished on the back of them. Through the space that they live in, these oil companies have come in and they've spread their veins into the ground to suck dry the very life that exists there, both metaphorically and in some ways literally. They're sucking dry the fossil fuels that are underneath the ground. And then that very thing is the thing that starts to deteriorate the economy and the life force around it. The game opens with this title screen and you see just a jagged landscape of oil refineries. You know, usually you would see like in a western like mountain peaks everywhere. And in this one it's just oil refineries burning in the night. There's something both dreadful and kind of beautiful and exotic about it. It's like a gun. How a gun is both dreadful and the machinery of it can also be beautiful. The technical aspect of it. That feels like what the whole setting is. It's these people dragging their way through just trying to live in a space where they, they've they've already lost everything, like it's already over. A lot of the sadness in this space, in this world, seems not vocalized. And it reminds me of a certain style of fiction, wherein the city itself becomes very much a character. These actual people that you're dealing with, their struggle in relation to the setting is really what compels you forward. Your understanding of that setting kind of helps define what those characters are dealing with, and then you start to sort of see their place in it. Some of the descriptions of the city, some of the choices about how to display the city, is really the emotional choices that usually would be set just for what a character says or does. There were things about the settings that I didn't understand and that the characters seemed so familiar with that they wouldn't acknowledge them. There was a tendency for people to respond to the question, why are you doing this, with, I don't know, I just have to. By having no commentary about certain uh, elements of the environment, it seemed like those things are the most ubiquitous and the things for which we have no power. Just like a classic noir, the city is as much a character as anything else. But there's also a type of fiction that's made popular by someone like Thomas Pynchon. What do you think, Thomas Pynchon? Um, these wings are delicious. Who's like the preeminent postmodern writer. He does uh, Gravity's Rainbow and Crying of Lot 49. Crying of Lot 49, the thing that makes that very tight, small story stand out is it's a story about conspiracy, about a character who starts noticing patterns in the world that she's living in. And much like someone who has been consumed by a kind of psychosis of paranoia, she can't help but see these patterns everywhere after a while. And the book does the opposite take of the realist view, which is instead of presuming that she must be crazy, it sort of follows the threads all the way through to suggest that no, every single pattern she's seen is correct, is actually true. Behind the scenes there really is a cabal of masterminds tugging on every thread and making everything the way that it is. This game follows that archetype of story, where you initially are coming back home because you just want to see where your brother is and you're trying to find your brother after your mother dies. In the process of searching for your brother, you start to find out that he may have gotten involved in something bigger than anyone could imagine. And in fact, this entire town seems to be getting slowly sucked into a kind of cult behind the scenes. And this cult is taking advantage of kids. As you go deeper and deeper into this cult, you discover that even the people at the top are kind of childlike and stupid and lustful. They don't fully understand what it is that they're doing or taking advantage of. It ends up having a lot of goofiness in the writing. You know, you're playing and like you'll have like a cat rocket away through a roof and stuff and you'll have people say things that just normal people wouldn't say. Kind of like all these winks and nods about like, look at this big fiction we're doing, you know? It's also kind of a wink and nod about like the stupidity of just things. Just things as they are are kind of stupid. And like stories often take away the stupid. They purposely refine everything and make it nice and shiny. Look, a perfect product for us to consume. It's like, look at this story. In games like this, or like novels, it's, it's often like constantly reminding you, no, this isn't going to be sh perfectly shiny and new, this is going to be awkward and weird. Well, it feels like it takes this consistent, low-level awkwardness and it disperses it throughout the story and it, it takes out the punchiness. It doesn't, it doesn't um, focus on the awkwardness to the point that it becomes fully a comedy. Because if they were to focus on it more, then it would just seem like, well, the point is that this is a joke. The point is that we, as creators of a story, are being funny. By removing that extra layer of pointedness, it seems like the, the awkwardness is for the sake of reminding you about the familiar things in life and how they are, are really absurd. 
aside from the humor, right? Like the weird awkwardness that permeates the whole thing. It is in contrast very strongly to some real serious imagery of despair and decay within this town. This place is, is a real place. South Louisiana, New Orleans, that exists. We can visit there. This is a time in that place that isn't yet occurring, right? It's far in the future. There's robots existing in this space. But the kind of decay that it's experiencing seems very familiar to the decay that actually exists now in a lot of these types of places. This game, as distant and silly as it can be, it also feels oddly personal. It almost feels too personal. There's this really great thing that you can find when you're clicking all over the different rooms in the main character's house. You can find this book called Crisis LARPing. It describes a tourism industry where people will visit these old decaying towns and they will project their suffering onto the suffering of the people in the town. And they will try to find their identity as victim in relation to the actual difficulties of the people living in these spaces. It becomes like a way of connecting to pain, a way of from afar feeling like you're suffering too. Like there's a kind of importance in being the one who suffers. It captures so much of what I think the game is actually trying not to do. It's showing a lot of the suffering and it's showing the ways in which these oil refineries can truly suck dry these towns. But it's also showing like people just living. People living in very human flawed ways where they join cliques and you know maybe they just they're trying to get work or maybe they kind of trick each other. Maybe they make stupid jokes. Maybe they're just working, being regular people. They're not very exotic or interesting in like the movie-like way. Like there's literally a point where there's a guy, a director in front of the convenience store. He tries to talk to you because he realizes, oh, you're a local. And he's filming actors in this space. None of those actors are from South Louisiana. He sees you and he's like, oh, you're from South Louisiana? Say some stuff. And then you do say some stuff and he ends up getting really disappointed because you're nowhere near as perfectly pathetic as he needed you to be. What you say isn't as goofy or stereotypical. You just sound like a regular person. He's so disappointed that he goes to the South Louisiana place to try and film a South Louisiana story and it turns out that you're just like everyone else. There's this light play on like representation, like what is South Louisiana supposed to look like? As decrepit as much of the space has become due to real world conditions, so many of the places you go are sad in ways that are familiar to anyone who lives in a city where the jobs become dead end or where you start to get left behind. There's just sort of a familiar homelessness and poverty that exists throughout. And I like that it's not its not too much honed in on a specific type of pain. It tries to be kind of universal about that pain. This is a, a real dystopia. In this case, it's science fiction. It's supposed to be far enough in the future that it fits kind of the genre of dystopia where it's like in the future, look at all this horrible outcome of industry and how it just consumes, consumes, consumes. But so much of what makes this dystopic is very current and like normal. People don't notice that they're in the boiling pot of slipping away into decay and kind of losing their opportunities for well-being. It's the kind of shame of needing to admit that you're actually in a dead-end space, that things aren't going well for you. And that shame can cause you to sometimes just play the character. You continue to work at the bookstore. Or in the case, great character in front of the convenience store, this bully. This bully in front of the convenience store is the perfect marker for me of the shame that I'm trying to describe. He lost his job at the convenience store because an AI came in and this automated cashier is now there at the convenience store accepting all the payment from customers. This guy completely lost his job. He then is just hanging out in front of the convenience store and just seems to double down on the role that he knows, which in this case is like the kind of high school bully. What's funny is you come back to this town and you're much older and he's still treating you like, oh, I'm just the bully and you're the little victim. And he starts wanting to fight you. It's such a perfect reminder to me of like the ways in which Instead of noticing how effed up the condition is, the fact that he just lost his job and he has nothing now, realizing that he could have solidarity with so many others, he silos himself more into whatever role he feels he can identify most with and feel strong in, and he just becomes that bully. It's just this shame, like this need not to reveal your shame, not to actually deal with it in a way that might require admitting that things are not okay for you, that you didn't win in this big broad game of everyone trying to get one up on each other, you ended up being the one being stepped on. And so he then he just tries to step on others. And there's little bits of that, like that Detective LeBlanc. It seems like he hasn't noticed that time has passed him by. He represents an era that doesn't exist. 
and his usefulness has kind of deteriorated substantially. He just needs people to recognize and see him as the character he wants to play. That also extends to like the character with the hot dog stand. He has oh, these yeah. hot dogs that have been, I think they're like over a decade old. They are completely inedible and he does not have any intention on uh, restocking with fresh hot dogs. He just wants to sell them. He has the stock and he's going to wait as long as he has to, to sell them. This town has gone into a period of just looping on itself. It becomes a broad carnival stage play. Everyone you meet is a kind of character in a stage play. As you speak to them, the wool starts to come off in terms of who they actually are, how well they're doing. They're all not doing very well. They're actually having a really hard time. But they have nothing else to do other than continue to act out the sort of life that they've already set up for themselves. It's so sad because there are so many places where entire livelihoods, the basis for that livelihood has disappeared. And yet that's all these people know. As automation continues, the many thousands and thousands of truck drivers will eventually lose their livelihood. The coal mines close in a town after enough of the coal has been completely removed and completely decimated that landscape. And then the people are just left. And that was the thing that they were good at. That was the thing that they knew. They have all the health issues from that just lingering on and on. And then their children have to decide, well, maybe I leave. This game kind of gives you a little taste of what it's like to go back to a home where you started to get the sense that due to the absence of significance in terms of how the world was treating you, you started needing to attach to whatever familiar value you once had, and that has become a stage play, and you're now stuck there. And this main character, just coming back here, seems to kind of at one time try to get out of that, and then is now back in and starting to see the ways in which all these characters of the town are puppets now being tugged along by this grand conspiracy in relation to the industry. At some point in the process of trying to find your brother, you have to see some of the behind the scenes of this town. You learn that some of these people who are being left behind, especially the young ones, because when you're young, I mean, that's where all of your dream machinations start to come alive. And if you're in a space where there is no opportunity for you, then it's very easy for you to then get consumed by belief, by group mentality. And in this case, you as the main character start following this app that guides everyone. You know, it's like a little treasure hunt. Oh, find these three icons and then you'll meet me. And it's this guy who's like a cult leader. He's trying to get everyone to follow him into this arc so that they can leave the planet, right? And it's the whole idea of like, we're gonna go on this big ship and we're gonna fly away and we're gonna get out of this town and we're finally gonna be free from this horror that we're in. All these kids are, to be a little rude here, they're all losers. You meet them eventually, you get to talk to each of them. They just play video games and sit around and make stupid jokes and get high and stuff. Like they, they really don't, and it's not necessarily, the, I'm not judging them as losers. I think I'd be a loser too, I am a loser. I think we're all losers here in this. But I think in the, in the state that they're in, it sort of becomes their default space, you know, and they're just kind of hanging out. And they get kind of sucked into this weird cult, and they don't really care or believe in the cult. You talk to them and it really turns out they really don't believe in any of it. It's just the only thing that seems to care about them is this weird little cult that's behind the scenes. You start to learn that the cult is actually kind of surrounding the character's mother, Catherine. There's this character, Papa, who believes that Catherine, the mom of the main character, is in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. So they need to use her in order to gain access to heaven. So there's this whole cult built around your mom. It ends up really, to me, kind of reinforcing that idea. Like, everyone's just kind of being tugged around. A lot of the main leaders of the cult are the oil refinery executives. And you get to meet a couple of them at one point and they're very interested in Catherine and what she's seen because she maybe has seen like a UFO thing. Not UFO as an alien per se, but like some weird orb. And they're sort of fixated on like, is she connected to Jesus Christ and stuff? And it's like this whole weird conspiracy. It's very Thomas Pynchon-esque. It's just sort of the sense of really feeling out of control in your life. Really feeling like even if you tried your best, there's so many people in greater control than you and they're crazy <laughs> and so you really can't do anything to help yourself in relation to them i really like the sort of metaphor of that because to me so much of the value of really absurd conspiracy and sort of a conspiracy theorizing often comes from rather than perhaps not believing in the the meaning of the way that society works but rather believing that it's just too much to bear like you would rather not actually get to the bottom of things, so you, you sort of make up another story to get to the bottom of. Because <laughs> it's more satisfying, you know? 
because you don't want to know that this town that is based entirely on an economy that relies on an oil refinery and not the people who work at that oil refinery. The people who are actually in the city are not necessarily a part of the larger vitality and lifeblood of the town. They're being replaced, they're being used, and then kind of discarded and left lesser for it. That truth, it's so hard to reconcile with any of your hopes and dreams, right? It's not something that anyone would want for themselves or for their children. It's this crossroads where you have to either accept that a town is not for you, that a society that has created limitations for you is not also providing benefits to you. That realization can often spiral into like either you make up a new conspiracy that explains why all of this makes sense, or brilliantly in this story, you can make it a true conspiracy. You can actually make it happen. <laughs> you can become the conspiracy that you made up in your head because the truth never mattered. It's like this nihilistic sort of replacement of meaning where you just project meaning. In this town, they, they projected so wholeheartedly that they were able to actually manifest a, a real cult. There's enough that's arbitrary in their situation that you then get to notice, well, if it's arbitrary, then I can be a part of it. Like, I can play too, in my own way. Speaking of the arbitrary, it's just sort of like, think of the technology that surrounds them, right? There's literal security bots. These robots that walk and move around like humans. AI has now replaced people in various jobs. The technology is extremely advanced, and yet they're still connected to an oil refinery. We're still using fossil fuels to grind our way forward and allow for machinery. That's still the industry that exists, is a literal ancient industry. Talk about an absurdity. The real truth at the center of this game is, if you think all these jokes are stupid, if you think like the way people are is kind of dumb, look at how dumb this is. There's an oil refinery in the future. We can do all these great things. We can literally make an arc to outer space. Like the cult is trying to go on a ship, a rocket to fly into outer space. They have a rocket that can go into outer space, that can go to another planet, and their town still runs on oil. That is absurd. That is truly silly. That is a silliness that applies right now. We can have SpaceX rockets flying out, and there are towns that run on coal and oil. It's right to look at it as absurd and sad.